Okay. So, email marketing, getting it right. So, I will be presenting today. My name is Albert. I'm the marketing manager of VA Connect. Um, I've <laughs> I've started VA Connect. I've, I'm one of the founding members, and quite an interesting journey. So, today in today's little a, um, what will we discuss? It's just the introduction to am I and why do I know what I'm talking about? What is email marketing really? The human factor, psychology and email marketing, does timing and segmentation really matters? And then the Q&A. So when it comes to the Q&A, please feel free to let us any questions, Hoi, uh, just put it in the comment section. Um, I will get to that Q&A at the end of it, and then we can just manage all of it if there's any. Okay, so who am I? That's me. <laughs> A little bit longer beard, but that's me, Wilder. So I started my first official business at the age of 16. Um, it was an internet, um, internet cafe slash computer shop slash website design company. And that was way back in 1996. And 1997, I managed to figure out the gap in the real estate market on how to put houses or real estate on the internet. And I also managed to write a little program to mix, to, to merge of photos, to do a, a photo share. So you can do panoramic views in the houses. So that set us apart quite a bit and that also made us do what we needed to do. So that actually helped us quite a, a bit in, um, in growing our business back then. So fast forward a couple of years, 24 years old, I, found myself being the sales manager of a regional photocopier company, Office Automation. So started a salesperson, done quite well, figured out team dynamic, got my own team, and then I was this regional sales manager. My team done phenomenally well. I was in control of new business, business development, and the, the team managing that. So it was quite difficult because we don't have existing customers. We had to find new customers all the time. But that was quite fun. Um, it taught me a lot about how to deal with interaction and how to, to generate interest. So fast forward a couple of years again, um, when I was 30 years old, I managed one of the bigger, biggest accounts in South Africa for office automation, same company, Metropolitan Life. It was MMI, um, is a holding company. So I managed to land that, that big, big, big um, account for our company. It's the second largest in, in, the, in the company. The biggest was government because we have the national tender, the government tender. So it was quite a phenomenal feat to, to manage and service that, that account. Um, it taught me a lot in, in relationships and corporate dealing and how to work with the corporates, and how to position yourself in corporates, and how to work with them. So loads of interesting uh, times. Shortly after the MMI account, I decided, me and my wife, now partner, now wife decided to be gonna start our own venture. So fast forward another 10 years, another decade, that's me, 40 years old. Um, fortunate enough to have founded a multi multitude of companies, um, some more successful than others, some less successful than others. But my role in all of them was purely based on strategy, sales and marketing. And later on, they developed into strategy and marketing only. Um, so when it comes to strategy and marketing, I, I've got quite a track record. I've, I understand the game. Uh, I've been in it. Um, I understand the psychology of it, and that's why I wanted to bring it over to you, to the guys, because I realize many people do email marketing, but I don't really know what they're doing. It's just for the sake of doing the email marketing and doing the series and doing the setup. So just some of the stuff that I've done in the past, I've built over 200 websites. I think it's like 300 websites in my life. I authored over 15 million emails. I've been fortunate again, fortunate enough to be part in many email campaigns. I've written the whole series, opening emails, closing emails, sales emails, converting emails, approaching. I've done it all um, purely because of the time that I've been in this. So I've the one advantage is time in the market. I've been in this forever. I've also been fortunate enough to consult on cohorts in government. So when they want private sector thinking, they approached us. I was one of the fortunate few to figure out governmental problems. Um, I also consulted in JC, so it's um, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange listed companies. I consulted international companies on marketing and positioning. And conglomerates, major, major big companies that, that work in multinationals um, when it comes to marketing and, and sales and strategy. 
And then something a little bit personal is my crypto investor and enthusiast. I love crypto, love cryptography. Um, I've been in crypto since 2015 as well. So that's a very long time that I've been in it. I've been around the block a couple of times, lost a couple of, lost a bit of money on, um, on scams purely because I've been in it for so long, but also learned quite a few lessons. Okay, so that's me. I believe if you understand where I'm coming from, you'll understand why I can actually give you quite a bit of insight into how to, to do email marketing in the right way and how to actually achieve some results, not only to be able to, to schedule it and get it going. Okay. Next. What is email marketing? In short, email marketing is a very effective communication, sales and marketing, and relationship tool. It's a very effective tool to to communicate with the customers, current prospective customers. Um, it's a tool to do sales and marketing. So, you know, it's a sales tool, physically promoting uh, products, marketing, physically marketing your company, physically put your company in front of other people and relationship tool. And I think this is the one that, that gets missed a lot is the relationship part of it. The relationship part of email marketing is quite powerful if you, if you actually go through the power of, of setting up your series correctly. So, Ink up a very effective communication, sales and marketing, and relationship tool. So I wanted guys to understand that if this is what email marketing is, how do we actually use it? And where do we use these different types of tools within our email marketing um, strategy? When you build relationship, relationship tools is usually it's a post engagement. So the customer, it's a service-based business, a product-based business, they come to you, that purchase something from you and they engage with you. And then you're like, thank you for the purchase. We really appreciate your business and do care and share the love. Here's a 15% or 20% discount that you can discount code that you can share to your friends. Relationship building is happy birthday. Um, relationship building is quite powerful when we use it correctly. So it is to show that you care, it's to show that you as a customer, a potential uh, prospect is not only a number, but is someone who I actually care about. The marketing tool is how do you actually market your business? How do you position your business? What kind of information do you share with people to make sure that they understand not only the service or the product that you offer, but also the core essentials and the core essence of your business. So the marketing side of email marketing is fantastic, but again, it, it comes in segmentations. Where do you use it? The next point is education. When we speak of educational tool, on email marketing. Education, engagement, and nurturing is very close to each other. So education, we use these tools to, 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 pros, to, to work with prospective cars, to say we are solving, we are sourcing developers for um, software agencies. So as we are connect, I educate you in to say that full stack developers are becoming a niche. Go, the language for Google is becoming up and coming. It's an up and coming language that your programmers need to know. Um, Python, Python in programming, um, I got a new uh, coding platform. Um, and then you educate your customers. So you, you use this little industry relevant information pieces that you can send to your customers. So should you do that, you just position yourself as a thought leader in the process. Why, are, why, why am I better than the rest? because I'm actually on top abreast of what's happening in the industry. I'm actually on top of what's happening in my business. People like you, I'm giving valuable information to you. I'm making your business better. Um, you can share tips on um, time management with your customers. You can share tips on SEO tips to them. Any educational tool that you can send to them will actually position you. And that can also happen through email marketing. An engagement tool is, hello, we haven't seen you in a while. Um, here's a 15% discount as a welcome back um, little carrot. Use this 50% discount in our um, online shop and welcome back. So you, you try to get them engaged. Or you can say, uh, guys, go and like and share our new post. The post is all about our outsourcing software developers can help you as an, as an agency. And you can ask them to go and look at the post and share the post. There's no sales to it. It's not positioning you. There's no pitching them for any product or service. It's not doing anything. You just physically want them and entice them to get into engage with your brand or your business. 
And then the nurturing tool is a top of mind tool. The nurturing tool can again now for pre-sales and post-sales. Pre-sales nurturing, we use a bit of it, um, a relationship building, we use a bit of internal marketing, a little bit of education, a little bit of engagement, and we create this nurturing series, pre-sales. So we do all of this to make sure that the people understand us, they understand what we're about, and that we are top of mind. Then the post-sales, post-sales nurturing is, again, um, there's a lost lead, someone haven't engaged with your brand or your business in the last six months or eight months. And then you can always start sending them education or stuff. So the nurturing is a, is a combination of all of the rest of above, but it's where you use it that makes it the email uh, a nurturing tool or engagement or educational tool. So for nurturing, it's very important to, to actually start building uh, thought leadership with email marketing. A little bit of an from an interesting tidbit that you know, over 4 billion people use around the world use email this year. So what it makes it quite phenomenal, it's double the number of people on Facebook. Um, there's 2.2 billion active monthly users on Facebook, and there's 4 billion people on, on email. If you look at Instagram, there's 1 billion users on Instagram, there's 4 billion people using email. 90% of adults in the US uses email versus 69% of adults that uses Facebook. So everyone is always on about, you have to do Facebook marketing. Everyone is on Facebook. Your target is on Facebook. Guarantee that the people you want to speak to are on Facebook. Everyone is all about Facebook marketing. But obviously, if you look at the stat, the stat actually states that you have a double opportunity with email marketing than on Facebook. There's another interesting stat that um, people who have born between or pre-1996, they spend an average of six and a half hours a day on email. So if you look at the time people spend on email and you look at how many people are on email, it's definitely a, a unpolished diamond that's in the chest. So it's definitely give you the, the reason to say, I need to start investing and I need to start investigating email marketing. My next slide is a very, very important one. And I want you guys to really understand this deeply, 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 is the human factor. And I want you all to read the little, the last sentence on this slide. Always remember, you are dealing with other people. You are dealing with other people. So whoever's on the end of your email list, whoever's on the end of that send, blast, that email blast is another person reading your email. And you need to remember that you are dealing with people. You are spamming someone. You are bringing value to someone. You are educating someone. You are engaging with someone. But it's always someone. It's always a person. So when you do your emails, always write your emails with a human touch, with human in, humanness about it. Know that you're just writing an email series and trying to get a certain message over through your series. You're actually engaging at every point. You're engaging with the human. Every point of this engagement series, there's another person on the other side. So why is it important? Because you need to make them feel that you are understanding of the fact that they are a human. You need to make them feel that you're not just a number on my database, another number on my email list. You need to build empathy. You need to build authenticity. You need to build all of this. And you can only do this if you really understand that there's a human on the other side. One of the things that will set us apart or set you apart going forward is the fact that you speak to another human. If you make sure that your communication is all about another person, the next person that I'm speaking to, there's authenticity, there's a relationship that you're going to build that the person who's just writing a general email with a general little message that doesn't speak to an Albert or doesn't speak to a Susan or doesn't speak to a car. How will we ever know that that message was sent for me? Then I don't feel like it was personal. If I don't feel personal, I feel like it's just a database thing. It's just one thing that you blast out to everyone. I, doesn't, I don't feel special. Nobody feels special. And the, the thing just goes, goes sour. So if you look at the series of pictures I got on the left-hand side, by the fact that they're all the same women, they all got the same thing in common. It's caring and compassion. They all show care, caring and they all show compassion. And if there's one thing that I wanted to take away, if there's only, only one thing that you take away from this whole day, 
is when you are doing email series, write it for another person. You are dealing with other people. So make sure that when you deal with other people, that it make that the voice and the tone is actually built for another human. One of my favorite parts in email marketing is the psychology in email marketing. And I believe this is where most people go wrong. They don't understand the glow of email marketing. When most people think email marketing, they think what tools can I use and how do I set it up and how do I get people and leads in my list, which is very important. And you have to know how to do that. And that's why I've created the course on that. So the course that you can go and have a look at is our email marketing course. It's on our own platform called VA Varsity. Um, so it's just VA, V-A-R-S-I-T-Y dot C-A dot Z-A, VA Varsity dot Z-A. Go and have a look. On the course that we, that we have done on VA Varsity, we are going to the deeper how tos How do you build a list? What type of emails do you use? When do you use those emails? What type of segmentation? Why segmentation is important? We also speak about which platforms you can use to schedule, which platforms you use to get insight, which platforms you use to understand how to and wait, which times to, to promote it and, and to send it. So in that course, we, we explain to you the, the how to. But if you understand the why to and the glow of email marketing, your effectiveness, your efficiency level will just run through the through the roof. So um, if you start thinking about the psychology, why are we doing email marketing? Yes, we understand that, that there's different timings now. Yes, we understand that there's different types of emails that we can use in email marketing. But when do we actually start writing the images that we use? The psychology of it. That is when we actually win in this or when we lose in this. So psychology, yes, it matters. And every little aspect of your email matters. And everything plays part in the psychology. So if you look at social bias, what is social biases? A social bias, for example, if you get a, get a, a phone call and there's a certain start to that number, if it's a private number, you already know it's a call center. And if this call center picks up the phone and starts the first three or four words, you already know it's a call center. And then like, no, I'm not interested. There's a person at the, the, the traffic line that walks up to the car. And this person that walks up to the car comes to you and without even saying a word, you're like, no, I'm not interested, no, thank you. Without them pitching you, without them looking at anything, without anything, you just, no, thank you. They can tell you, look, you look very pretty today. I love your hair. Your car's wheel is flat. So there's many reasons why we can absolutely look at um, the social bias and why that's important in social biases. And the social biases, um, the social biases, there's a mic on foreign. I think it's your mic. Um, so social bias is very important. And how do we actually use the social biases and overcome social biases in our emails? One, we don't want a general subject because if it's a general subject, it looks like another spammy email. So we don't want that in. The kind of language that we use, some of the language words that we use say, oh, in, the, in the subject gives us, no, it's a spam. It's a scamming thing. So we don't look at it. So go and research social biases and go and research social biases in email marketing specifically. If you start understanding how social biases plays a role, it's a huge win. It's a huge win for you. The second point is the human brain and how we access information and how the human brain interprets information. We are programmed to, to think Instagram. We are programmed to think multiple tabs on our browser. We program to think Facebook where we can scroll up and there's images and images. So the human brain has been programmed this last few years to shorten our attention span and not to have a lot of fluff, to make it clear. So when it comes to human, how the human brain and accepts information and how that works into email marketing, again, is what does my, my subject say, my subject line? Subject line, we, 
we are HR outsourced HR company that specializes in software development. Or you can, because of the way that the human brain interprets inf information, have you ever thought of outsourcing your software developer to an HR company, an outsourced HR company? Because you asked the question, you change the way that the human brain interprets your information. Could you make a statement? It looks like everything else. Because you ask a question, you engage the brain. Which colors and which fonts does the brain perceive as friendly, as energetic? So there's a lot of psychology when it comes to how the human brain physically anticipates the information that you gives it. Our language, shorter sentences. We don't want to use very high, high level vocabulary. So go and understand like the one when we actually present the information via email marketing that we have to take in consideration how the person on the other side will actually their brain now their brain will interpret the information that i'm giving to them fonts and colors if you use a black and a gray and a brown it's not very exciting to a point of dull but if you're going to go orange you go red you go pinks and greens and blues the in the 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 feeling that those colors evoke is of happiness, is of productivity, is of excitement. That's a positive emotion to bring into your email marketing. If you can, by having a bold, short, orange header, saying exciting news, you know you already got the brain engaged. You've already got some emotion in that person getting up, um, stirring some, some form of emotion in that person. And then when the font is, is legible and easy to see for the brain and easy to understand for the brain and the colors are, are enticing, you'll not get lost. If it's a small font and it's very exciting news, but it's just typed in black, normal 12 font size, it doesn't tell the brain that there's something exciting happening. So colors and fonts that you use is fantastic, fantastically important. That brings me over to the content that counts. So content that counts connects again with the colors and fonts. Content that counts is images. The first image that the person see when they land or when they scroll to get the image that actually draws their attention. You know, to have a subject line that draws their attention. Um, so content that counts is much more than just the written content. Content that counts is the image, the images that you use, the subjects that you use the spacing of paragraphs, the length of paragraphs. So pay attention to your, your content when you write as well. There's a rule of thumb, three paragraphs, three lines or sentences, whichever comes first. Only that's the body, that's the length of your, your, your email body. What's the value that you drive to them? So when it comes to images and to the actual content that we do, we have a concept that we call IDA. A-I-D-A, attention, interest, desire, and action. So if anyone scrolls through the, through the Instagram page or they scroll through the, the Facebook page, or they, they, you first want to attract attention. So on the image, what kind of image do you use? What kind of colors do you use to attract attention? When it's on email marketing, the first thing that you want to attract attention on is your subject line. So what's the subject that you use? Do you use an icon in your subject? Do you use emoticon in your subject? Do you have personalization in your subject? So what, on that first one is attention. What do we do to draw attention, to attract attention? The second part is interest. So now we stop them at the image or we stop them at the email. So how do we draw the interest? The interest can be I can show you how to increase the efficiency of your email list with 99%. I've created interest there. It's like, shit, what do you do? How do you do that? On the, on the email, now that you created attention, you draw my attention with the subject, they look at the pre editor and in the pre editor they're like, what is driving any interest here? Why am I interested? Over the last 15 million emails that I've written, I figured out the perfect uh, formula to create killer emails. Interest is created. Interest is created in the image. Desire, I can show you how. 
register to this webinar and I can teach you how to increase your efficiency of your email, your current email uh, campaigns. There's a desire. I want to improve my emails. I want on the on the um, on the image. How do you create a desire? There's lots of psychology that you can create desire on images. The one is a type of image. Do you create happy people? If there's happy people holding a coke, it creates happiness. So if coke is all about happiness, there's a smiling person with a coke in there. It creates an interest and a desire with only an image. And how do we get the action? Buy your coke cold. Contact us now. Click here to get more information. So there's always what is next. What's the desired um, action that we want them to take at the end of this? So when we write an email, your first opening paragraph is quite important because it should confirm the attention that grabbed. The second part is, and you know, how do we create a desire? So we, we create attention and then interest. So confirm the attention. And how do we create desire? I want this. I want your service. I want your product. What can you give them to create a desire? And then after that is what do you drive? What do you ask them to do? What do you tell them to do to drive some action after everything? I want you to fill in the form below. I want you to comment in the chat section. Section. I want you to click on this link. I want you to share this with a friend. So what is the desired action that you require afterwards? Then objection management. Objection management is something that we always work in somewhere in the IDA model. I know it's the end of the month and the purse is quite thin. However, we've included a 35% discount voucher. This voucher is only valid for the next 48 hours. Act now not to miss out. The cool thing about that is we understand, we said, money, the fact that you don't have money to spend on makeup right now is not a big problem because we're giving a 35% discount. The cool thing is we create urgency on that as well by saying it's only valid for the next 48 hours. So when we come to objection management is what is a common objection that someone would not want to engage with your service or product? And if you can subconsciously start managing objections in your, in your marketing collateral, in your email series, this is one email. If you have a very expensive service, you can use five series five and five email email series to say, this is the first objection managed. That's the second objection managed, third and fourth and fifth objection managed. So by the time that you get to engagement, they don't have no's anymore. They can tell you, this is what want, this is why I wanted. You've managed the objections and they can just go into to the next part of the sales funnel. The last part in psychology and email is the most famous radio station in the world, WIIFM. What's in it for me? The moment you can start positioning what's in it for your reader or the recipient of your email, they automatically connect that with value. So now I'm not just spamming you with another email. I'm just not trying to force something down your throat again. I'm actually bringing value to you. So on the previous example, what's in it for me? A 35% discount. You know, that's what's in it for them. So automa automatically they feel I'm getting more value for the money because I'm getting 35% discount. What's in it for them? A discount code. What's in it for them? The opportunity to speak to the CEO. What's in it for them? The opportunity to further their business. What's in it for them? The opportunity to look prettier. What's in it for them? The opportunity to lose 10 kilograms. What's in it for them? The opportunity to have the perfect blemish-free face. So if you start thinking of psychology and email marketing, and you think of what's the social biases that I need to overcome, how does the brain actually interpret the information that I give it? You give some thought to your, to your uh, fonts that you use in your email and the colors that you use, the colors on your images and the colors in your text. You, could, you consider the fact of content that counts. How can I write my content in a way that attracts attention, creates an interest, creates a desire and forces some form of action? You start writing in objection management. How do we get them to say yes by removing the no's? And if you stimulate the fact of what's in it for them, what's in it for me, so you prove value to them, the psychology of the email that you've written or the series that you've written 
is 100% stronger. So that's something that you really need to consider when you do this next time, on your next email campaign. Little that you know again, the click-through rate of a segmented email list campaign is 109 to 100% higher on average than a non-segmented email. So segmented emails appear to perform significantly better than just mass emailing and diary audience. While opens, unique opens, bounces, unsubscribes, see more vast improvements. That's not the real clincher here. The big thing that we do is the click-through rate. Segmented click-through rates at 100% higher click-through than non-segments. What does matter? Click-through rates is the goal. If I have a 100% higher click-through rate, if the industry standard is 14%, I have a 28% click-through rate because I'm 100% higher, higher than the next person. If the industry standard is 15 or, or, or 5%, I've got a 10%. I've got double the chance of closing the deal that the other people couldn't do. I've got double the chance of getting them on my website. So by default, my website traffic costs half of it. By default, every dollar that I earn on my, on my email list is double as much as the previous guy who doesn't have it. By default, everything that I do is either half as bad or double as good. So that's what the 100% increase in click-through rate means to you. So timing and segmentation in email marketing, why that's important. Pushing out the right messaging at the right time to the right audience means more profit to you and fewer chances of your subscribers getting annoyed by irrelevant emails and unsubscribing as a result. The number of email active and validated emails you have in your email list directly indicates the power of your business. If you're a service-based business and you have 10,000 people on your email list, it's very easy to nurture them into customers. It's very easy to educate them into customers. It's very easy to bring them into a new service offering or explain to them a new service offering. If you change your business likely, it's as much as sending out the email to those who care and they will understand that this service is for me. If you have a product, you have a 10,000 less big product and you sell red, cherry apple red lip gloss and you sell blusher and base. If you have 10,000 people on your list, the odds after every single email that you're gonna get sales is fantastic. But if you actually start segmenting it and you say, now that I've segmented, because Maxine has bought candy apple red lip liner, lip gloss from him, I can promote lip liner and lipstick to her. Because I understand that Albert is male, I can email a Valentine's voucher to say, buy this nice earrings for the love of your life. I can't say that send the same email to a female that's in because then it's like uh, buy for the love of your life. My husband don't wear earrings, or if I so if I spend money on on running gear, there's zero chance that I will engage in jewelry. So segmentation is very very important. So just on the numbers, um, open rates increases by fourteen percent then so you got a 14% higher increase in, in open rate. So when someone, when an email lands in your inbox and it's segmented, it's closer to my needs and, and um, um, interest areas. And therefore it's much easier for me to open it. Unique opens is 10% higher than non-segmented. 100% increase in clicks and you click throughs. You've got a 4% lower bounce rate of emails that doesn't work. You've got a 3.9% lower abuse report. And you've got an almost 10% lower unsubscribe rate. So segmenting your email list and sending relevant emails to the relevant segments obviously translates into money. All of this makes that your email list is much more valuable. It earns you more and it costs you less. Different reasons to, to segment is buyer journey. 
again, on it when it comes to product. So I'm not going to say welcome back email if you haven't bought from me yet. But I'm also not going to say yes, a, a, a discount voucher if you are buying from me every week, because then I just lose money. If you are buying from me every week, I don't have to give you a discount voucher. If you haven't bought from me yet, it's good to give you a discount voucher. If you got to my shop, you put stuff in the cart and you abandon cart, it's good to call you back with a discount voucher again. So let's say you're in a service-based business. So now I'm in service-based business and I just engage with your brand. I'm nowhere close to, to buying. I'm nowhere close to signing a contract or signing the deal. The email journey that I will send to you as a prospective customer looks way different than the email journey I'll send to a customer that stopped using my services six or eight or 10 months ago and that I want to use as a, to, to bring them back. If someone has already purchased, but it's their first purchase, I can send them a thank you. I can say, share the love, send the discount code to your friends. But if I can't do this, if my buyer journey is too immature yet. So you segment your journey based on where they are in your, in your buyer's cycle. Are they in the top of the cycle? Are they at the bottom of the cycle? Are they pre-close? Are they post-sale? Have they abandoned cards? So all of this, say where they are needs different journeys. The next way we can segment is demographics. I touched on it briefly. If I engaged on takealaw.com and I bought electronics, my profile says I'm a male, 40 years old, I've got a high interest in electronics and I buy that once a month. They can send me other man cave stuff because I'm a man which buys electronics regularly. I have no interest in the pressure cooker. I have no interest in the sewing kit. I have no interest in a fantastic new eye makeup remover. So if you segment according to demographic, it's also much more relevant to what you can offer people but you can offer your customers. You offer discount codes to the Gauteng region only. So if you don't segment it to that, why send it to the, to the Cape Town people? Why send it to the people in the rest of the country? Because they can't access that. They can't access the shop that you're speaking of. Demographic segmentation. I will not promote a millennial product to someone that's 65 years old because they will not engage with that. They will not buy that. So demographic segmentation is very, very important to understand. When we start doing timing and segmentation, the open and click through rate just jumps through the roof. One of those little facts, if an, in, an email lands in my inbox while I'm physically in front of my computer, there's a bigger chance of me opening it than it lands in my computer when I'm not in front of it. There's even a bigger chance of me opening an email if I'm busy in my email agent and the email comes in. Then what the email comes in 12 o'clock at night, I switch my computer on at six, everything runs out and you're at the bottom of the list. If I don't get your email in the first, first four hours, there's a 5% chance of me opening it and clicking anything in it. So timing, sending the email when your person or your customer is sitting in front of his computer is the best time to send it. The ultimate time to send it when he's actively in his emails. Very difficult for us to know. But we can say in this time and that time, they should be checking emails. So open and close and click through rates are fantastic if you understand timing and segmentation. Customer satisfaction when it comes to segmentation as well. You receive an email from an irate customer. You're not going to ask him to promote your product or promote your service or write a nice review on Google. So if a customer is irate with you, you send them a nurturing, how can we fix this? How can we do this? But also on the other side, thank you for your purchase. We've seen that you've been using our product for the last, or this is the second time you purchased us, purchased it. On your third purchase, we'll give you a 25% discount. Customer satisfaction through the roof. When you're a service-based business, thank you for engaging with us. You've been, you've, you've been using our services now for three weeks. Would you mind sending us a short survey if there's anything that we can do better? 
Now, because you as a company care, the customer satisfaction just goes through the roof. The customer relationship is very close and similar to that. But the customer relationship is, the timing of that is the day before your birthday. Hey, take the day off. It's your birthday tomorrow. And then the day of birthday. Happy birthday. I hope, hope you really took the day off and listened to us. The day after your birthday. I hope you had a fantastic birthday. Let us know how it went. Three emails, three consecutive days. Timing, huge difference. To someone who's just like, happy birthday. Done. So customer relationships is very important when it comes to timing um, your emails. And also with the segmentation. So if I have a marketing customer and I have a software developer customer and I have a project manager customer, there's no need for me to send information about industry trend for remote project manager to our marketing people, to our marketing customers. There's no reason for me to send information why Go Lang is the next programming language that they need to focus on because it's irrelevant to them. But if I send Go Lang is the next language that your software developers need to focus on, for my software developer customers, the relationship just goes through your roof. The last one on this list is lost leads. Again, that's someone who's been engaged with your business or engaged and on your product or service. And they're either abandoned car, they stopped using your service, or they haven't bought from you in an extended period of time. Then you can always initiate them again by saying, yes, discount code, pull in again, let's get your service going again. Or you can say to them, um, uh, you know, I see you haven't used my service. Is there something that we have done wrong? How can we improve our service to get you back on board? So do, if you start using the lost leads for segmentation and for timing, you can really get a lot back out of it. So if you think of how we write the email, when we write it, we think of the fact that we're actually writing it to a human. We think of the fact that the images that we use and how the image looks, what elements are on the image, how the elements based on the image, because that's the way that my brain and my eye interpret it. My subject line, there's actual emoticon in my subject line. My subject line is question-based. My subject line makes statements of that, that draws attention or interest. I send the right email at the right time. Now, all of a sudden, your list really 10x in value. So timing and segmentation is fantastic when you actually get it right. There's many tools that we can suggest that that's fantastic in segmentation, that's fantastic in understanding the, the analytics of when do they open the emails, how, what times are they on the inboxes. There's many pl platforms that can use that. And I ask again, if you need any of that information, contact us. But guys, I want to point you back to our course on VA Varsity. VA Varsity, we have this email marketing course. The email marketing course, we really dive into how do you build your list? How do you engage your customers? What type of emails do you send when? What type of thank you emails do you get? What type of relationship building emails do you have? We give you tips on how to write your, um, your header, how to write your emails. We give you a, how to step-by-step step how to, to do segmentation and um, scheduling of your emails on and different platform that's fantastic for product based businesses. So if you're interested in that course, let us know. We can send you through to the links. We can even offer you a discount code. A discount code. I'm actually willing to give everyone a discount code that's in this course. Also, something that I will give to everyone that's here today is 15 minutes uh, consultation with me. Um, if you're interested in that consultation as well, send it. Send us an email. We'll give you a code. We'll send it to VA Varsity again. We can just book a time, time with me and put the code in and we can have a chat where we can dive into a little bit more detail about how we, how this can help you better. So the last part is the Q&A. So if there's anyone that have any questions that we can discuss, um, now is the time. If there's no questions, um, please email me. Let us know if there's anything that we can assist with. I cannot see from here any um, questions is there any questions available anyone in the room i can't see any of my notes now uh, let me see if i can try and manage that i don't see any of the questions um guys so if there's anything and i missed it i'm terribly sorry if not email me if you emailed me um, please let us know 
I can book that time with you. And then we can do a one-on-one -on -one quick coaching session. We can do a quick information session if that's what you're interested in. Um, otherwise, I hope you find this very valuable. I hope there's a bit of insight. I hope it gave you a little bit of information on why we do email marketing and not really what we do when we do email marketing. Scheduling an email is one thing, but understanding why we're doing it is what it's, what's most important. So how would I know if my segmentation is correct? Um, you, you market the right products or service to the right people. Um, how do you know? Analytics. Analytics, everything is in the data. If you do segmentation correctly, the kind of information, the kind of feedback that you get is phenomenal. You get a lot of feedback back um, because you start measuring everything. You measure the form form, where they are in the journey, where they are in the CRM, um, which stage they are in your CRM. So when you do segmentation, probably there's a lot of um, reading that you can, uh, data and analytics that you can actually start running into. Tato, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hope there's anything else. Bronwyn, big pleasure. Everything let me know. Great insights. I'm glad you loved it. Love the point about, about dealing with humans, guys. That is who buy from us. Dealing with humans, it's simple. Why is there such a thing as influencer marketing? Um, influencer marketing is because people buy from people. And people want people to influence them and to say that I trust this product. So People is all about people. Sales is all about people. Um, email marketing is all about um, email marketing is all about understanding that you are dealing with people, and again, drive value, generate value to the people that you're working with. Which software is available that help with segmentation and analytics? Some of this um, Mailchimp is one of them. It's good. Insta is a good one. Um, for the life of me, I can't remember the one in the course now, but the one in the course is also a fantastic one. So have a look, um, go and have a look at our, our course. Um, there is specific to product and segmentation in product. However, I think a quick Google search will, will also give you the insights that you need for what and what kind of soft. Because again, segmentation, segmentation is very specific, is very, um, use case per case. So MailChimp segmentation is much different than Kinsta segmentation. Kinsta is specifically for Shopify. So if you have a Shopify shop, use Kinsta. Kinsta segmentation and analytics will work on Shopify specifically. Um, Clavio. Clavio is the one that we work on in, in the online course. Clavio, same thing. Clavio is fantastic for Shopify product-based uh, segmentation. So iWeber, iWeber Infusionsoft. iWeber and Infusionsoft is much more focused on business to business and service-based business. So the segmentation on them looks different than analytics looks different than them than what, than what you get on Kingstar and Clavio. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into um, software that you can use. Again, I'm gonna invite you all to just um, send me a mail if you want some private time with me. It's albert at VA Connect. So it's albert at victoralphaconnect.co.za. Um, and if you want the time, let us know. We can send you a code, you can log in. If you want a discount code on the email marketing course, let us know. We can also give you a, a little discount code there and you can go and do the course. We will go into the final details on what to do and how to do it, how to do the setup, how to get your list pulled how to get the right kind of people in your list. What kind of questions do you ask in your onboarding process to ensure that you, you segment your list properly? And there's also a very nice playbook. The playbook is a, it's a little Bible cheat sheet that you can have next to you to make sure that you check all the list when you build a proper email campaign. So I think for me, for, for now, that's it. So if there's anything else, please let us know. You have my details. Otherwise, have a good one. Ciao.